with accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners. Woo! Show me those guns. Let's see them. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Once again, Google Plus has done it. They've changed some of the uh, infrastructure around regarding the Hangout. I got in, and all of a sudden, it wanted me to schedule a Hangout instead of starting one. Oh, I have no. For now. And then it wanted me to invite people, but it almost brings the Hangout concept into an event-like format because then I wanted to invite my Abo circle. Apparently, that has too many members to invite people. So I had to just use my Me circle, which just has my other couple of profiles in it, just to get it started. And then from within the Hangout, I was able to invite my Abo circle. So it's very confusing <laughs> how this works, but somehow I get through it every time. I don't know how. It's just trial oh, and error. Goodness, I need Oops. to take notes, Seth. I know. So, yeah, Gina, you're in for a surprise this afternoon when you start yours. Um, and while we're at it, yours is going to be at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern, correct? Correct, yep. And now it was QuickBooks Pro Advisors Unite, but you've renamed it to broaden it to encompass some of the other cloud accounting solutions, haven't you? Yes. Well, the community and the event I've renamed. I have not yet renamed the Hangout. I'm going to do that January 1st. Um, it, it just, uh, including Zero and Sage, like, broadens the whole um, idea of what we're doing. It's all advisors there, um, and we mm -hmm. could use any type of accounting software. Makes yeah, perfect sense yeah. to me. If you can do Wave, too. They just came out with the bank rec feature. On it. <laughs> Thank, oh, it's about time. <laughs> not not yeah. that great, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's helping. <laughs> I you know I've I've gone into Wave a couple of times and I've really tried to like it, <laughs> and uh, I'm having so a hard time. Beth, I have a question. Um, I'm going to ask before I have to leave. Um, oh, it's already time. No, not yet. But I don't want to like have to rush my question. It's a real big one too. Uh oh. Um, you challenge me. Bruce um w and I were talking about T sheets. Mm-hmm. And he thinks that it would be a, a good opportunity for, for our company to use. Uh, the current company that we're using, it's just very simple, very basic. The, my guys clock in and out, and I go in and I print their sheets. Brad has to go through their sheets and kind of calculate out their hours cause it, and put job names on and stuff like that. So with your experience, have you experienced T-sheets or anybody else? No, I have I, had several demos to. of T-Sheets, and I have liked what I've seen a lot. I have not yet had a chance to get into it myself. I plan to. It is definitely on my list of... Uh, somebody's echoing. I think it's um, you. So I, it's definitely on my list of apps to check out. I've gotten to be very friendly with the people at T-Sheets. Um, I got to meet the CEO at the Sleater Conference, and he's a great guy. So I'm definitely interested in checking their app out. From what I've seen in their demos, it definitely looks like a compelling application. You could easily clock in and out from your mobile device. It all integrates and syncs down to QuickBooks. Um, as somebody who's running the show, so to speak, you can actually get a map and see where your employees are. Right. Uh, so you really can keep tabs on what's going on. And if somebody forgets to clock out, you'll get a notification that, hey, they didn't clock out. Maybe they forgot. And it, it, so there's all kinds of uh, smart infrastructure built into it that's really compelling. But I haven't actually tried it yet. Um, but like I said, I'm planning to. Anybody else? Anybody use it yet? Well, it works with QVO, doesn't it? What? It, it that's what QBO I've been told, that it does uh, integrate with QBO. It does. And <clears throat> mind you, I do plan on having them give us a demo on this Hangout. I just haven't been able to schedule it with them yet. And Jessie's been with us every week. I don't know where she is today. Well, I said Jessie will do a demo for you. That's yeah. one at the top of my list to really look into as well. I currently use uh, Spring Ahead um, for job costing and labor and all that, but it seems like it's a steep learning curve to like train new people on it. It's and a I huge learning curve. And that's a big turnoff to me because if we're trying to automate things, if that's our whole business model, that doesn't make as much sense. So I'm look. I want to do it. I know Don Brolin is uh, certified in it as well. Um, so she believes in it as well. Yeah, we uh, definitely. And into they've won all kinds of awards already. Into it's like them. Spring ahead. <coughs> I've used with a client. And the thing about Spring Ahead is it's very robust, it's very sophisticated, but in order to achieve that, they have to build a lot of moving parts that have to be brought together in order to get it to work. 
and that's where the steep learning curve comes in on Spring Ahead. Is uh, gotcha. I found that I wanted to create. I mean, on some levels, I I want to have the option of being able to create something that's very simple, where I can say, okay, here's a job, and as long as I've created that job, it's available for employees to enter their time on that job. But with Spring Ahead, it goes much deeper than that. I have to create the job, then I have to create the starting and ending date of that job. Then I have to define which employees are assigned to that job. And all three of those pieces have to come together in order for somebody to be able to log into their account and enter time on that job. So if I get the dates wrong, they're not going to be able to access that job. And the problem, the big problem with that is if I've done my setup or think I have and I wasn't aware or didn't realize or just made a mistake and put the wrong date in and my employee is going to enter their time, now they can't enter their time because I put the wrong date range on that job. So what I was finding myself doing was backdating every job two years back to make sure that it was covered and also back to, uh, and postdating the end date two years forward to make sure it was covered you know and there I'm should exhausted. be an option to say there's no date range this is just always available until I say it's not you know what I mean to me that would be at least give me the option to do it either way I understand wanting to have that kind of control and being able to say here's when it starts here's when it ends Right, but I would like to have the option of saying I don't want to have to define that. And it looks uh, like Doug Sleater is joining us mobile. Looks like looks like the roof of his car. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> joining us live is the roof of Doug Sleater's car. Not wireless. I'm sorry. Can I comment to Steve there? I had to mute him. I didn't Please. want him to think that we were picking on him. Um, <laughs> there was just some serious feedback. Um, I'm not sure if Steve knows about chat. If you go in the upper um, left-hand corner, um, look at the icon there, the blue one with the lines in it that gives you group chat, you can speak to us. Thanks, Seth. It, it may be as simple as turning down your speakers. Or if you have a headset, then that will cut down because, of course, what happens is without a headset, the sound comes out of your speakers back in through your mic and creates echo. 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 You mean what happens with a headset doesn't stay with a headset? That's right. <laughs> no, what happens with a headset does stay with a headset. Does. <laughs> hey, I have a question for Doug. Yes. Um, can you use the paradigm of that you're using in the Sleater guide for restaurants for zero in terms of setting it up? Oh, right. You asked that yesterday, I think. In that other... Yeah, I did. I, I, you know, kind of it. Yeah, so actually I have somebody testing that. Here's what, what, what I need to find out. And you can test it for me right there if you, get, if you want. Because if so, we've got a cool thing. Can you do a $0 sales receipt or invoice in zero? I haven't tried it. Because mm. the reason I'm asking, I've got a potential client that I've tried to get on zero, and it's a real small restaurant. And yeah. I talked zero, and they're talking trying to get a POS system put in, but I don't think that would fly because it's a real small restaurant. And I'm just thinking if I could use the same uh, concept with Sleater, the, the Sleater manual for zero. And I'm, I'm not yeah. all that positive I can, but I just thought I'd ask. All right. Well, okay. So the default or the safest recommendation is no. Yeah. Okay. Because. Um, because it's very specific to QuickBooks and the way the transactions work and the items and the payment items and, and all that. So, uh, uh, but I am considering and figuring out how I can um, uh, rewrite the book with zero in mind. Mm. Okay, thanks. What's that background okay. noise? Is that me? So That's you. <laughs> it is? I think so. Didn't hear it till you got on. Hi, Doug. Hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> uh, I'm going to switch to my computer. Sorry about that. If it's me, I'll I'll get out and I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. So, um, going back to where we started before we went live, Dennis was asking a question, which is sort of piggybacking. It have, how many of you happen to catch the uh, Zero webinar we did yesterday on social media? Doug and I kind of spoke. <laughs> was that recorded? Because um, I missed that. Yeah, it's they did record it. <laughs> and I'm going to ask Ian for the uh, link to that recording later today. Um, so we were talking about social media, and of course what we figured out pretty quickly, and it's interesting, I also got my feedback from my sessions at the Sleater Conference, two of which, as you might know, were also on social media. 
And there seems to be a theme here, which is that an hour is not nearly enough time to cover what you want to cover in, on, a, on a topic like social media. Yeah. Um, so Dennis was asking the question, you know, saying, for those of us who, you know, don't have the time, um, is it, uh, you know, sort of good enough to just retweet other people's content? And my comment on that is yes, absolutely. It's a great way to build a following because what you're doing is you're going out there and you're flattering people and saying, hey, I like what you're sharing, and so I'm going to reshare it to my following, and assuming that it is really good stuff that you're sharing. Now, here's the thing I would caution you about is you don't want to spend your whole day retweeting the obvious ones. Like if I spent my whole day retweeting Chris Brogan and Gary Vaynerchuk, that's not going to excite people because they already know to follow those guys, right? Mm -hmm. Because those are big social media guys. So if you're going to be retweeting people's stuff and doing that, especially if you're doing it almost exclusively, then you want to find content that not everybody knows about or not everybody knows how to get to and retweet that. So, and at the same time, that's valuable. So that's what I would say is you know a good strategy there is to just go out there and retweet um, you know that stuff. Now, at one point, what I had done was I took uh, a couple of... Uh, RSS feeds and program them to automatically go through my Twitter account every time they post it. One of them was Lifehacker. Lifehacker posts all day throughout the day and I very quickly annoyed a lot of people and they made sure I knew it. <laughs> so, um, hold on a second, I'm trying to help somebody get into the hangout now. Uh, One more spot. Is Doug gone? I think he said he was going to try and come back in, yeah. <clears throat> so we'll see. But um, in any event, I just posted the link, and I'm not sure if this is the uh, right link because again, they changed things around, so now it's not clear. Because <laughs> um, now there's like a page that shows up where you can clearly play the hangout, which is where I had to go to start the hangout. But I don't know. I have to find the post to actually, you know, where it says. Where it has the button that says join hangout. He's back. Doug's Marvel. back. Oh, now he's back in his office. Ah. That was good. He like, I'm so glad he's not driving. Shazam. <laughs> somebody beamed him up. Shazam. There he is. Somebody, somebody beamed him up to the, uh, to the starship. But this is pretty cool that you can do it on this at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you, Doug, we've done conversations on our mobiles through Hangouts before. Yeah, we were in the car the other day, and I called you up with Scott Sharp. Yeah, so. Well, I called you guys for, uh, right after Sleater when I was at the Zion National Park, or freezing my behind off, because <laughs> I had to go outside where it was quiet. <laughs> hey, I wanted to compliment you, Sarah. I think it was two weeks ago in the Hangout. I wasn't there, but I got to listen to it afterwards. And the the conversation that you and Scott and Seth had around e-commerce was mm. fantastic. That was and a good session. Yeah. yeah, you kept him honest. You kept saying, but wait a minute, yeah. I've got this situation. And so you made him answer yeah. the things that really matter. As I'm a, a little detail-oriented, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I think, uh, and Seth and I have talked about it, you know, we're going to get that taped and really, uh, you know, I think you're going to edit it down to just that, Seth, are you going to do that or what? Um, no, what I was going to do, what I usually do with the Hangouts, cause rather than edit it down, is you can index them. So in the description of the video on YouTube, you can put a hashtag with the time, you know, the minutes and seconds. And yeah. that way people can click to get right to a point. So you can create an index and say, at th click here at this time to you know, see us talking about this topic. So you create like a table of contents in the description of the video. And anybody can do that, huh, Seth? Yeah, anybody can do that. Like Sarah could say, you want to you wanna hear me on a Hangout where I'm talking e-commerce? And she could send a, a list of links out to her clients, right? And right. it works on Google Plus, too. If you post it on Google Plus and put the pound and the minutes and seconds in the description on Google Plus, that will cause the video to forward to that point oh, also. because I'll, I'll figure out where the minute, I'll say, you know, here's the video, go find minute, you know, one point. You know, because a lot of it's chit chat in the beginning, and so I want them to dive right into where we start talking yeah. about. Yeah. So, so Seth, uh, there's another tutorial you could give us. You already started it, but I don't. I think you probably need to tell us the rest of how. I want to know exactly how. Say that again. Oh. <laughs> no, that's a good idea. I should do a video on that. Um, said, but again, it, when you're you when you're whether Google. you're. Whether you're posting it on Google Plus or in the description of the video itself on YouTube, just put a pound sign 
and put the minutes, colon, and the seconds. And when you save that description or post it on Google+, that will render as a hyperlink, which when somebody clicks on it will, of course, you have to have uh, posted the URL for the video, too, and right. that will cause the video to advance right to that point in the video so that you can create, like, a table of contents or an index. Very cool. Well, I like when we have um, uh, a topic, or, or, or say we, we, we plan on talking about a topic, and we know about it a couple days in advance, and we can actually show up ready Prepared. with questions. <laughs> I prefer all. to surprise you. I so. know. Well, last week you said you told you you teased us with um, IQTEL. So we of course, to look you made me go down that rabbit hole one whole night. So how did you find it? Now that since you did take the time, because I haven't yet, I was going to surprise myself and everyone else live oh. today. I was going to unwrap it. It's the greatest thing Your since chocolate milk. Christmas gift. <laughs> it is. It really is. What is it? A phenomenal piece of software. The problem is, I'm trying to find a corporate solution to get things done for four of us and 30 clients. So now I'm in IQ Tell going, ah, oh, this would be perfect if it was, if it was just me. But, ah, so it's not a good collaborative corporate kind of solution? It does a little bit of collaborative, but how do I, if I'm going to be doing all that in IQ Tell and I'm also looking for another solution, the other solution, they're going to bump. So, <laughs> but I'm telling all my friends, I mean, I, t I told the entire choir. So, I've got friends so, who are journalists and writers and parents. Are they singing about parents. it? Hmm? Are they singing about it now? <laughs> Tonight at seven. <laughs> In a Celtic style. What is IQ tell? Well, yeah. I, you know what? Let me show it because then the other question I have for you, Sarah, is, is have you checked out Zoho Pulse? Because Zoho Pulse may be the answer for you because that's another thing I've been playing around with. And Zoho Pulse is meant to be like an intranet for your company where you can collaborate, you can create groups so that people can be included, you know, only certain people can be included in a group. So you can share content just amongst those people or across, you know, you for want, your whole you company. Want to see how many I'm testing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all doing that, Sarah. It's like, I'm exhausted. Yeah, uh, our, our staff is trying to figure out a new, exactly what you're saying, productivity collaboration app. Intranet, extranet, document management, Task. I want a landing site for my, you know, if I've got remote workers, I want us all to go to one site. I want to be able to discuss a file. I want to flag a question, of who's got the ball, you know, I want it all. Yeah, and we, we tried Yammer, and we just couldn't get our, our staff to do it because it was just, it's, it's kind of like Facebook, but we don't want everything. We want to be able to Departmentalize and right. and projectize. I want the little chats going on, maybe for this client in this project, this week's work. Yeah, and that's well, Zoho you can do project. that in Zoho. Zoho yeah. is great for that. Zoho yeah. Pulse and Zoho Projects between the two, and you know, again, I'm I'm finding myself at another sort of phase of development within my company where I'm starting to build a team of people exactly. to really help me. Seth, it's going going choppy again. You must yeah, be showing your screen. Got choppy. Yeah, probably because of my screen share. Let me it's turn that off. It's a screen share. It always goes choppy when you share. Yep. So, All right, so, so Zoho Project and what was the other one? Zoho Pulse, Pulse is sort of like an intranet. You know, it's got a lot of social network like features, but what I like about it is as Doug was just describing, within Zoho Pulse, you can create groups and you can include only certain people in those groups so that you can share just with certain individuals within your company if you have a project that you only want them sort of working on and knowing about and you want to keep that from everyone else, you can accomplish that. So, and originally when they released it, I think it was about a year ago that they announced, it was a little more than a year ago because it was when we went to Zoholics, Doug, and wasn't that last year, November, or something like that? Uh, no, it was May. Yeah. Was it May? Okay, so when they announced the release of Zoho Pulse, was it just this past May? It all blends together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. It does all blend like, together, doesn't it? It really does. So Remember, we met Robert Scoble there and saw the Google Glass that he had? I left before he showed up. But, oh, um, there, yeah. but in any case, the... Um, 
what do you call it? Uh, so they announced Zohel Pulse, and at that time, I got the impression you couldn't bring somebody from the outside, so to speak. In other words, somebody who had a different domain name in their email uh, into the group. But I said I was able to send an invite last night from my Zoho Pulse to somebody with a different email. So it looks like they've changed that because the idea is now I want to bring in a consultant that I'm going to be sort of partnering with on projects and, uh, and be able to collaborate with him there. So Zoho Pulse is you know, a pretty compelling option, I think, for companies to use as in sort, of a sort of an internal intranet um, you know, to manage projects internally and to group things based on you know, who's doing what, where, and when. Well, and, so, and Seth, that kind of, I was using Infusionsoft, or I've been using it for sales automation, but it d drops off completely when it comes to project management, task management, and sharing stuff out like this. And so it had me start looking at, like, what it would be the, like, ultimate option is a CRM slash, you know, sales automation and all that. I, I want it, like, Sarah, I wanted everything in one thing. Yeah. I want it all. Well, I want it all. Micro collaboration, project management, task management, document management. I want a wiki knowledge base. If you're a client of mine and I find out that you've uh -huh. got an auction, I go, I've already answered that question 20 times. Go right to my wiki. Um, uh -oh. uh, Zoho Pulse has a wiki. Well, oh, really? I want CRM. That, and so does Zoho security. Project. Now, here's the thing. Every time you attach a document anywhere, where is it? Who's See, got that's it. like Smart Vault. We want it all to go to Smart Vault. We don't want anywhere else we go in the chunks to talk to our documents, which happen to be in Smart Vault. Right. Mine are all in ShareFile. And are well, you using Zoho Doc as well? Um, no. In fact, we are uh, we are very close to going with Infusionsoft. So I'm listening carefully to what you're saying. But Infusionsoft again is only really to manage sales. I don't think it's a project management solution. It's not at all. In fact, every time I talk to them about, so how do I share this task out? They come back with, huh? What? Oh, wow. So it's a database. It is a database, Doug, and it really um, I mean, nothing probably compares to it as far as sales automation, which really was awesome. But as far as, like, I don't know if somebody's followed up on a task internally. You know, if we have a ticket for client stuff and I want to make sure we carry it through, there's no real way. It's like I, I'm creating more work for me, but I can't create a task for some staff member. Yeah. And I didn't like that. So I'm kind of, like, back at the wheel again. I can tell you my top five right now. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, go there. But wait, before you do. Yeah. Um, so you guys remember, we've been you've been on this chunkification, you know, journey. Train. But do you <laughs> see how we're all now saying, but I want it all. So mm -hmm. we want it all. The question is, do we want one vendor to try to give it to all all of it to us? And and the problem I've always seen in all my whole career in software is when you. When you when one vendor decides to give it to you all, then there's three features there that you hate about it, and then so you'd rather chunks if they'd work together. But but of course, them working together is really the hardest part. So, so then, then more on the other side of that, Zoho I know that is, their idea is Zoho is is it's a platform, but then you are piecing it all together. Like Pulse is one piece, and yeah, right, and then Zoho has, but Zoho has I think done an amazing job of bringing these separate apps, but many of which also are built-in features of other apps. So, for example, Zoho Pulse has its own built-in wiki, but, Zoho, but that would be good for internal use. But let's say I wanted to create a wiki for public consumption. They have Zoho Wiki, which is just a wiki that you can use and create. And so, I, I mean, I'm, the, every time I get into Zoho, and this happened to me last night because I was playing around more with... I was trying to decide, for purposes of collaborating with this other guy, I was trying to decide, do I want to use Zoho Projects or do I want to use Zoho Pulse? So I started actually setting up both. I went into Zoho Projects, I created a project, and I said, okay, here's how I'm going to lay this out. At the same time, I went into Zoho Pulse for my company, where I already have some internal people in there, and I'm like, do I want to do it here? How do I want to lay this they out? They don't talk together. It doesn't become one stop. No, Projects and Pulse are two separate apps. Now, I'll tell you where there is some sort of linkage is as follows. So... Then I said, okay, if I'm collaborating with somebody, you know, Zoho has the nice uh, sort of document attachment feature where you can attach Google Docs, you can attach documents and upload them right from Dropbox or um, what's the Microsoft one, uh, Skybox or SkyDrive. Um, 
So you can attach documents very nicely, but also Zoho has their own documents application. So once again, I found myself playing around with that and saying, because I would rather have it completely integrated, because I don't want to attach a document to something that somebody then has to download, change, and re-upload so that we all have the same document. That's To me, that's brain dead, right? right. So... And if you attach a document from one of these outside sources, that's essentially what happens. Google Docs, of course, it can launch right in Google Docs. So I said, let me try Zoho Docs and a Zoho spreadsheet, and I started playing around. And, of course, I like the way that works because if you use Zoho's own document formats, then when somebody opens it, it's in the collaborative space, you know, in your browser on the web. And their spreadsheet is great. It does all the same stuff Excel does. In fact, in some respects, I think it's laid out even a lot more nicely than um, than Excel itself. So, <clears throat> so I was really the only thing I didn't like was I couldn't figure out how to turn off the grid lines on Zoho spreadsheets, which was driving me nuts. I probably spent the half an hour looking for that and never found it. So, so I can't figure Seth, out how to turn off the grid lines. Seth, you know I've been saying we've been high or drunk on uh, Zoho here at this leader group for a while. But what I'm having trouble getting the staff to buy into is the way it looks. Oh. Thank you. I'm visual. Yeah, and and it then also pretty. Was, not not so much pretty, but some of them are so configurable is what we want. Yeah, I, I want I want to be able to really manipulate the way screens work, work and what my mm -hmm. drop drop down drop down buttons look like, and and it needs to be pleasing and. And yeah. some of them I go in and they're just like linear, cold. Yeah, that's you know, cold is a good word. It is, the interface cool. is very simple in Zoho, but I think that has its advantages too because the focus isn't on making it gorgeous. The focus is more on making it functional. Well, you start there, but, you know, hey. Are you a meat potato guy, Seth? <laughs> I like everything, Tim. <laughs> Well, and the problem with all this chunkification, even if you find all these solutions and we're going to try to piece them all together and get happy, I've got fees coming out the yin-yang. <laughs> you know, I'm paying for a share file. I'm paying for my website. I'm paying for, yeah. you know, and you start you start really analyzing how much this is costing. And then some of the stuff I want to be able to incorporate into the client collaboration, they're going to say, well, Share file and email works fine for us. Why do you want to, you know, charge us or, you know, really find out it's worked into their fee? Um, you know, per <laughs> user fees and all this. They, you know, I, I don't know. There, there's, um, you know, the whole, the, you brought up the um, Google Docs where, say you have a document, you both want to work on it. Something like Google Docs, you're forced to use their version of Word or Excel and, but there's nothing wrong with their version of Word or Excel, in my experience. Uh, it's, hey, it's gotten... I already told you that it will not work for budget spreadsheets. Because well, the spreadsheet, yeah, over. because you can't have it overlap cells without merging them. So that right. I, that Deal problem breaker. I'm aware of. Um, Deal breaker. Now, the one I was looking at yesterday, what the way it works. See, everybody has different ideas on how to solve these pain points. Um, one company... When you click on a document, it locks it. You can work on it. It comes down, it uses your own Word or Excel or, or, or whatever PowerPoint. And then right. as soon as you save, it's flying right back up to the document management. And if somebody tries to get in, it says, sorry, somebody's got it open. So it's not an at-the-same-time idea. But I'm using my own resources, my own program on my desktop. But I can still collaborate and still have one document <coughs> that of copies flying all over the place and um, that would work I could make that work what about um, Office Tool Pro or Results CRM or any of those are those on the top of your list Sarah no Office Tool Pro is not um, well yeah I, I've got my top five and then and then I think in order for me to really do everything that I want to do it's going to cost me a fortune because oh. the ones that whose models are to charge by a user, and they're charging, you know, um, I've got to I've got to lock into uh, a monthly fee for everybody who's going to use this product. And you you start with my core four internally and thirty clients, and clients may have one to five each. You know, so unless I can I can work all those fees, and it's just less money in my pocket 
<laughs> I'm trying to work it in and what you know value bill that monthly fee. Right. You, know. you mean make, and make it scalable so you can tr yeah share share that cost. Right. So so I so I sat back and I thought, what am I trying to do? Why am I going through all this hell? And um, you know, I'm trying to step back and manage four people. And like you said, there'll be a task. I'll go go, go in to, to review a quarter and, and and I say, wait a minute, I asked this question two months ago. You haven't gotten an answer. Well, I asked him three times and or, or I asked you and you said you'd get back to me and so I was actually was in, you know. But there's so many thousands of teeny little details that um, I need a way to one control all my staff but then we're still getting documents back and forth and questions back and forth I like you know, the ticket that idea of a ticket um, with clients so I want to be able to do it both not just not just practice management <coughs> Zoho has but. a ticketing program where you can do a, a support I mean if you look through I, and I get the the comment about the user interface you know uh -huh. But they have the functionality. I was going through, once again, going through other applications last night, just poking around in the process of my trying to evaluate uh, projects versus Pulse for a particular purpose. And like Joanne mentioned, she uses Evernote, and she uses the GTD method of uh, implementing Evernote, um, where you have most of your stuff in a single notebook, essentially, and then you use a lot of tags. Now, I Who does that? Joanne. Me. So, well, Joanne, you need to go look at IQTEL. Yeah, IQTEL yeah, works with to Evernote. Me, I, I did look at IQTEL when I saw, you know, Seth mes mentioned it because, you know, Seth and I, we always go back and forth talking about different project mm -hmm. management things. And IQTEL is basically just piggyback piggybacking off of what I already do, which is just setting up my Evernote to do GTD. So mm -hmm. I really, I, to me, I think it's just duplicating efforts. Well, it brings in your email component. Yeah, well, I bring in my email too, right into my Evernote. So into Evernote. Well, yep. That's an interesting concept. Yeah, you get you can forward your email right into Evernote. I've been done yeah. that since day one. Yeah, actually, then, there's a there's actually there's an app in um, I can't remember what it's called, but I have a a Gmail app. I think it's called PowerBot, where I just click a button and it automatically sends it to my Evernote without having to do anything. So and that's, then you can create. Task and then I tag it. Yeah, it automatically sets it up as a task, and then I can tag it. I can allocate it to my staff who has to do it. I can tag it to a priority, and then I just sort my actions. I have an actions pending notebook, and I just sort that, and it automatically sorts it by who has to do it, what priority, and then when they finish it, they just tag it done, and then I know it's been done. And right. Yeah. The problem, the problem that I've run into with that setup, where I've tried to use it for myself, is that when you sort it, it's going to prioritize the tags in sort of an alphanumeric way. So if I have something tagged for one, which means it's now, then it's going to sort first by all those that are tagged with a one, not necessarily by the person whom I've assigned it to. Yeah. You, it, I, it, again, Seth, if you do it the way that Secret Weapon does, it'll automatically alphabetize and then numeric it because I had that same thing at first too but if you tag it exactly the way that secret weapon tells you to you won't have that sorting problem. Secret weapon? I the could have sworn I did it exactly that yeah, way. It's, I don't have that problem at all. If you google the secret weapon the secret you'll find weapon. there's a series of videos <laughs> that teach you Dave Allen's method essentially ap applied to Evernote for how to you know manage projects. Now oh, the other thing I found was dealing with, with what, with Evernote, that's what that is? Well, it's a yeah. way of getting all your tasks into Evernote. So you've got an email that represents a task that needs somebody to follow up on, you move it into Evernote. And you can use okay. the app Joanne mentioned, or in your Evernote account, you get an email address, and you, you forward it to that it. email address, and it shows up in Evernote in your default notebook. Yeah. So yeah. the other thing I found was that it, the, this method has you setting a priority of order in terms of when things need to get done. So there's one for now, two for next, three for you know later, four for someday, five for something else, and six is waiting. waiting. And what I found was that it was just too much. It was like, I need simple. Like, I just need to know follow-up, and I need to know who, right? So I... What I actually did was I, I did away with that process, and I just said, you know, it's very simple. I'm going to tag it for the client. I'm going to tag it with the word follow-up. 
and then I'm going to create a saved search so that the next time I'm working on that client, and mind you, as soon as I tag something for a client, I go to my calendar and make sure I have time scheduled for that client so I know when I'm going to get it done. And then the next time I work on that client's stuff, I pull up my saved search on all the things that I've marked for follow-up for that client, and now I have a list of things to go through to make sure I don't forget to do anything. And to me, that's so much simpler and so much, in my, for me, it was a much better way to organize that stuff. That oh. should be called whip em employee. <laughs> whip em. Whip em. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> there is on a move. Because it was uh, actually starting to drive me crazy with all these different what's next and what's Sunday and what's waiting and what's now. And I was like, forget all that. Just No, sit. I need to oh. filter that down to exact. I want to know just this gal, just that yep. client. But I also want to step back and go, where is everybody? And none of this notifying in my email. I've got enough email. I don't need more crap in my email. <laughs> but um, the uh, Seth, you were talking about Evernote. Well, I originally started playing with um, Evernote, the 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 uh, green elephant, right? Yep. Okay. What's the other one? <laughs> OneNote. I started playing with OneNote. Yeah, I'm visual. I'm telling you, people. Um, I played with uh, OneNote and probably went off to some other toy. And then, but you're the one that showed me SpringPad. Yeah, I started playing with that a lot. So too. now I'm doing all SpringPad. So then I get into IQ Tell and I go, well, I don't want to do the, the elephant. I want to do SpringPad. <laughs> <laughs> because now all my stuff's in SpringPad. <laughs> Yeah, I started moving a lot of stuff over to SpringPad, and then I started moving a lot of stuff back to Evernote, but I'm still using SpringPad now to log yeah. all my video trainings for my clients because I find that that's a much better way to do that. Uh -huh. Where, you know, a after every training I do, you know, I have notes that I've written up based on that training, and there's going to be a link that they can click on to go watch the video of our session. Uh -huh. So that <coughs> all gets put into a SpringPad notebook that's unique to that client. And then I have a virtual assistant that's helping me now, so I add her in as a collaborator so that once the session's done, she goes into my Adobe Connect account, she sees the new recording, she goes to the notebook, updates the note with the right information, and then notifies the client that their video is ready for them to view. And it works beautifully. Can you keep that private? You're able to keep that video private? Yeah, because the well, the video is um, you know playing off of Adobe Connect. We put the link to the video in the note and spring pad. The notebook is a private notebook where I've added the collaborators, so only those people I've added can access that notebook. That's a cool idea. So that's my assistant and the client, of course, who can access the notes in that notebook. So here's another toy, Adobe Connect. Well, no, Adobe Connect is not a toy. It's a $1,500 a year program. That's what I use to do my remote logins and record the sessions, and ah. I can do webinars with it. It's, 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 it's not, and that's it's, in addition to Camtasia. Camtasia is good for recording privately when I want to just create a video to put out there. Adobe Connect is where I'm logging in remotely with you and mm -hmm. having a session with you where you can share your screen with me and I can take over your screen and answer your questions. That's what I use in all my private trainings. I mean, it's the core of my business these days. I thought you just said you used Adobe Connect. Yeah, Adobe Connect. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I thought Camtasia. Okay. No, Camtasia is what I use to create videos that I'm putting out on YouTube for sort of public consumption. Oh, okay. Adobe Connect is what I use to log in remotely with people. Camtasia, you can't do that with. Camtasia so is just a recording tool. Remote and recording. It's remote recording. You can do webinars. I can upload PDFs. I can create lots of different meeting rooms. Adobe Connect is amazing. It's sort of like TeamViewer. It's it's an amazing um, you know sort of remote access webinar kind of program. And what I like especially about Adobe Connect, over and above, you know, the go to meetings and go to webinars and all that, is when you record the session, rather than give you a file to download, which can often be large and clunky and then hard to share because now I've got to upload that into a share file or some such thing to share it with somebody. Instead, Adobe Connect renders a, uh, the video is essentially hosted on their servers, so I don't have to worry about that. Adobe's not going anywhere, and I'm sure they have many redundant backups, so I'm not worried about ever losing anything. And the, uh, you get a URL to give to somebody that when they click on it, it'll play the video back. Very cool. So it's a Doug is like too many topics, my head is exploding. <laughs> yeah. I love hearing about all the solutions and we use so many different products together to get what we need. Yep. But Adobe Connect is what I settled in on for the specific reason of how the recordings work in the end is and how I can deliver them as a link. The downside, they've got to have a live internet connection to watch their video. But so I want to go back to where we started with uh, Sarah, you were going to give us your top five because you've done so much work. 
I think Sarah needs to write a, a guest post for the Sleater blog about that this. That sounds like it. You are invited. You are duly Ooh. invited. Well, and Sarah, How I, many I, hours I have in this? Exactly. <laughs> you have so much knowledge about it. Time to write it up and put it out there. Come Sarah, I could work with you. Sarah, because I've been actually putting together an Excel spreadsheet based on each CRM and kind of benefits and all. You have it as well? Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 hold on. Scott Sharp has a whole matrix of it. I, I also have a file for every single product. <laughs> on paper? And how yeah, often do you... Yeah, I'm all fat. Well, you know, because sometimes I want to crawl out in bed and do it. I'm not going to touch it. It's got to come, you know. No, I agree. Now, by the way, I noticed going back to Zoho Pulse, they have a file checkout feature. So if we have a file uploader there that we're collaborating with, you can mark it as be, as checked out so people know not to work on it until it's checked back in. Yeah. Well, one of the things, once I got down through all the features that I have to have, and then I start narrowing it, and then I get then I get the, the luxury of saying, well, what's it look like? So right. I, look, I look for the flow and ease and, and all that. But... Um, to really be bang up, I want I want a client to be able to log right into their space. It's got my logo, their logo. It is their private little. They feel special. And so um, the the um, the ones that collaborate with um, the different desktops, the different uh, workspace, I think is the term. Um, I let's see, Hyper Office right now is at the top. But um, serious money <laughs> because they charge by user. Have you looked at? Uh, I think it's called High Rise. I'm curious. Oh, High Rise isn't on my no. list. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I swear. To I know, but I know a few people who have used High Rise and they seem to like it. Is it called? High I forget Rise? which one it was. There was one that I got so excited about. Went down the rabbit hole. Six hours later, I am so excited, and then I get to the very end, and I'm like, okay, how long have they been in business? Who are they? What country yeah. are they in? People, people. Where's people. my data? And I yeah. found a review where a man said, the phone number in New York is a voicemail. They're in the Ukraine. I'm like, oh. So, yeah. so you know what the future is going to be? And there's a movie I saw a preview for coming out about something like this where cool. it's actually a funny sort of romantic comedy where the guy has this digital sort of assistant where basically he talks to it and says what he needs and the assistant goes and finds it. So I need to call somebody. I would say, hey, can you get Doug Sleater on the phone for me? And it'll go look up Doug and, you know, try his different numbers and get him on the phone. Apparently the guy winds up falling in love with the sort of persona of the digital assistant. Uh -oh. <laughs> and, and, and then, of course, it's sad at the end because he can't actually have the romance, but it's kind of interesting. So, And, and so, uh, people are putting Siri in the chat. The problem with Siri and also like the Google S Voice product is it gets it wrong so much of the time. I, I ask for one thing, I get something completely different, and I find it's incredibly inaccurate whenever I've used it. And I've tried oh, them Siri, both. Siri, the movie. Sir, Siri, my husband... Oh, saying. that's the name of the movie? Siri? Okay. Well, what the um, uh, uh, Big Bang has an episode that we were in absolute hysterics about yeah. <laughs> about Surrey, but um, that was about the same time my husband got his iPhone or he got Surrey, and so he said he was trying to set up some some tasks, and he said Surrey, um, remind me to call my wife, and it says, well, Mark, who is your wife? And he said, my wife is Sarah Laidlaw, and he said. Would you like me to remember that Sarah Laidlaw is your wife? Yes, <laughs> yes, please. Right. So then, what it does is, as he it looks at his GPS, and as he leaves the parking lot at work, it 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 like dings him to to call his wife. So he has on there when he pulls into the garage, it dings and says, "Kiss your wife." <laughs> That's hysterical. Oh. I, I had one, when I first started playing with uh, Google Voice on the phone, or I forget what it was called at that time, they keep changing the names, but where you can do the voice search on the phone, I said, just to, out of curiosity, because I know Google's got a good sense of humor. Like when Google uh, Maps, or when Google first came out, if you asked for like directions to a place in the UK, they would actually give you directions how to get to the East Coast, and then it would tell you, swim across the Atlantic Ocean, and then go on from there. So they have a sense of humor about how they set these things up. So out of curiosity and to see what they would do, I said, find me a hot girl. 
and all of a sudden it launches Google Maps, and I guess using my geolocation, it figured out I was in Los Angeles, and it zooms, it homes in on the Playboy Mansion, which I. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, everything that was in the Big Bang episode, you knew everybody was going right to Surrey and asking the same questions. It was funny. It was so funny. Yeah, somebody else told me that they were doing Siri and they said something like, you're an idiot. And then it responded by saying, you're calling a computer an idiot? Right. <laughs> That's right. At least they have a sense of humor about these things. But it's, it's got a way to go, I think, before that technology becomes reliable. But when it does... It'll be amazing because then I don't have to worry about all this stuff. I can say, who's working on Project X? And it'll say, oh, so-and-so is working on Project X. Here's where they're at. Here's the last thing they did. And right now what I think we're looking for is the solution that lets us access that information quickly and effortlessly. And it's not there yet. <coughs> okay, so we've only got to her first one. Hyper I know. And then you said high rise Seth, which is also that's thirty seven signals. We like that. Yeah, thirty seven signals got bought out or changed or no. Is that Basecamp? No. Well, Basecamp is another thirty seven signals product. Right. So high rise is their CRM. Basecamp is their project management uh, app, similar to Zoho Projects. Um, and I the difference in Basecamp was Basecamp was much more expensive from what I saw the last time I looked at it. Mm -hmm. What? I have a client paying fifty dollars a user a month. On Basecamp. Basecamp. It's expensive. It's expensive. Um, all right, HyperOffice, um, PB Works, which started as a wiki and has now morphed into. What all is it? Kinds. Type it in. PB. PB. Oh, type works. Uh, Podio. Igloo. Podio, um, Roxanne had brought up a long time ago yeah. when I was talking about Zoho Projects, that she said it did everything Zoho Projects did for about the same price, and it did some things that Projects didn't do. Yeah, there may be some things on my list that you, you know. Plan box? Plan box, very slick, but here's, here's my concept. Organization is me, accounting services, we are, right? Organization, the next level is a project, which are all my clients, but I have sub-projects. I'm going to break up my engagements to I have a bookkeeping engagement, consulting engagement. Right. So the next level is what they've hired me to do. Then the next level is let's let's chunk that into 12 monthlies, four quarterlies, one annual, and then I want task under it. And so if I'm in the month of January. You know, they're handing me the payables for this week, the bills for this week, got somebody's approving, they've got a question, and we get down into that level is where we have all the, the little communication and social, you know. But, but you I need to be able to step back. But you want to create the way you organize. You don't want a software to say, what right. bills do you have today? Right. They, right. They'll say, put in this start date, end date, due date, and time. And I'm like, I don't think that way. You, I don't. You want I, it's too much. I, I, I just want to. That's yeah. why we like OneNote. OneNote is absolutely free form. Well, that's one one of the reasons I like this hyper. Well, one of the, the things I liked with IQtel is you can start. You know, as you build your model, you're defining all your drop downs. You're defining your sort fields. You're defining, and then I need the security to be so detailed all the way down to a document level. You know, somebody here can can see everything, but all the way down to the document, only a certain group can do it or only a certain person or let's not let a, this other person look at it. I mean, I ha I've got to come in at a security angle. I've got to, I've got to be able to step back and see right. what all the gals are doing and then zoom in tighter to see what's going on. I want to see who's dropping the ball. So that's, you know? that's your current favorite. That's I my can... current favorite as far as it's it's so flexible. And that's IQTEL. No, no. Uh, no, no. IQTEL is the um, that little product that's just for individuals. Sorry. HyperOffice. HyperOffice is your Hyper office. favorite. And it has a wiki. But when they start, like, I also want to do, like Seth saying, if I want a public wiki, like for my program, I want to, like, a, go here for a, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, questions instead of calling me for support, they should be able to go somewhere and have yes. all that. Knowledge base. Yeah, knowledge base, exactly. 
I'm on a public knowledge base. Um, you know, HyperOffice doesn't start going that way. They're all about internal who's part of our organization. Mm -hmm. And then when they bring in the clients, they're part of your organization too, and the, the, the pricing model gets crazy. So mm -hmm. PlanBox, high on the list. But once I get down into those sub-levels, some of the features that I want are on the task level and not on the project level and vice versa. A lot of these have calendars. So right at a client level, they can have their own calendar. But yet I can step back and I can see all the clients' calendars. I can merge all my employees' calendars. You know, you start, you know. I mean, this is really slick ways to be able to step back and manage. That plan so, box kind of looks feature-wise like Zoho Project is. Which one? Uh, plan box, like monitoring progress against the task, which probably means you have to tell your tasks how complete you are all the time. So you're right. babysitting it all the time? I, I can't babysit. Yeah, we're 25% yeah. complete. We're I hate that. I don't think that way. Yeah. The biggest thing with my company... But how, let me stop you there for a second. How would you not babysit that? Because how, how is it going to know when you've completed a task if you don't go in and tell it I've done task? Pending or done? It's or done when it's done. It's not, it's not a time idea it's my, or percentage done idea. It's is it done? Yeah. Right, but then I don't know about PlanBox, but Zoho Projects, I can just mark it done. I don't have to update it every True. step of the way if I don't want to. But that, right. that means... Well, that that's what I'm saying. Some of these products... But then you're using you it that, that way problem. anyway. Either it's done or it's not, right? Right. Right, but the the software and all the screen, uh, all the features are wasted on me to say percent done, and it, and it puts pixels on the screen. I'd rather just say like, give me a setting that says track projects by percentage, or just click them off when they're done. Okay. Or fair enough. who who who's uh, next in the assembly line to ask a question? If if one of my bookkeepers has a question on a bill. It will either hold up processing or it won't, and it gets bumped up to this, the chain. And maybe she asks me, and I can answer it, or maybe it needs bumped to the client. But in projects, you can create those dependencies, and you can even get a Gantt chart view and see if something is going right. to hold it up when it's not there. Right at a, at a task level. But anyway, mm -hmm. the, the, the whole point is they all have different ways of dealing with all these pain points. And you just have to dive in and really play with it and play with it. So. I didn't realize how many pains we all have. <laughs> so, Sarah, how many have we covered so far out of your five? <laughs> That's five. That's all PB, five. PB yeah. Works, Podio, Igloo, Plan Box, and Hyper Office. All right, cool. Somebody Pretty write good. those down so people can check them out. And, Sarah, I think it would be amazing if you could write a blog post for the Sleater blog on what you've kind of covered, uncovered about this. Um, no, you well, won't get paid like, for it. Like Tim, are you... You're you're going through this too right now. Yeah, well, I could collaborate with you on this. Yeah, um, I would love to just have a private. Like, yeah, what have you found? Where you guys can use Zoho Pulse to do that private <laughs> collaboration. Sarah, what is your um, email? <laughs> Wait, I want to know where you're going to collaborate on this. Which project management software are you going to use? Email. What about Ever Trello? Note. <laughs> Evernote. Anywhere but email. Hi, Jesse. Get me out of email. All right, so we got Jesse in by popular demand to answer Hi. Rhonda's questions. I am so sorry I'm late. I was I was in a meeting, and then when I looked at the time, and I thought, oh, I don't know if I should jump in this late. But Wait, then I said, of course, all the time. The, right off the bat, when we started sharp at 8 o'clock this morning, Pacific time, Rhonda started with the first question of the day, which is, hey, who's used T-sheets? And... How does it work, and should I use it for my business? And we all decided it's no good. So we, yeah. we said it. We said we told her. We said, you know what? T sheets is terrible. Don't ever use it. <laughs> Products product is great, but the the team is just um, they're no, just it's the, they're a mess. the team they're is a just mess. very low energy. You know? <laughs> and they're a mess. They, they never smile. Honey, you could have a horrible product, but I love your company and, and the employees uh, so and much. And they don't. <laughs> they have an awesome product. I say so. So I'm so glad. <laughs> Both. Hey, we're I think we're up to 265 ratings in the the Intuit App Center now. We're a five star. We've gotten like 16 or something reviews this week. Awesome! So just read through those and you'll hear all about how much people love us. But Jesse, we need somebody to come on this hangout and give us a demo of T sheets. I know. So this is my I can totally do that. But this the this is done. 
this hangout's done in like five minutes, right? No, I know. So today's not schedule, the day. But we should schedule a tea sheets demo hangout. On Christmas day. Christmas day. <laughs> just, just all come and hang out. I love that idea. I'll hey, bring I'll... my my eggnog and. Hey, yeah. I'm Jewish. It doesn't impact my calendar. <laughs> Chinese food on Christmas day. There we go. If Seth Let's wanted a tea sheets demo on Christmas day, I would do it. Uh -huh. Actually, but it doesn't fall out that way. Friday the 27th is right after Christmas Day. We could do it then. Um, but you know what? Honestly, I, my concern there is I would rather do it when we have a chance at having a larger audience. Yeah, let's do. I just think it's uh, that important. So next Friday the 20th we could do. Well, that would be good. I think before the first of the year because imagine a company that's thinking about their time and attendance what a better time to get it all started off than the first payday of the year. Well, That's and me. And, yeah. and there's many clients that I want to start sharing this with as well for the project-based stuff, Jesse. Right. So, so Jesse, next Friday, I need you to, either if, if you do it, amazing. If not, bring somebody from T-Sheets <laughs> and let's do a demo. <laughs> You'll have to check with Nancy Smith. I just did a demo for her, her fun contractor hangout a few days ago. So if she says that it went all right, then then I'll do it. No, if, I'll, if, I'll you, have, if you tell I'll me you can along. do it, then then you're you're the woman for the job. Well, we will. I will. Bring I was in. there at the at that. <coughs> yeah. And then you have Thanks. to bring Matt so we can see the. Yeah, and I, yeah. I want Matt in on this too because I want him throwing candy through the webcams at. Oh us. Yeah. yes, that's a great idea. I know. Well, and he um. You would fill up all your spots, though, with T-Sheets people. <laughs> no, most of them are just going to have to watch publicly so the, uh, so the rest of the panel can join. But Jesse, I have to you guys use, panel. Do you guys use the CRM, Jesse? Yes, we. Um, our marketing team uses Zoho CRM, and uh -huh. then our support team uses User Voice. Oh, my goodness. User so Voice? Everyone's User Voice, never heard of that one. Well, it's a, it's more of a, a ticketing system for support, but it we have a our own system for customer notes, client notes, and tasks that, that they use. At some point, we will probably all integrate into one big <laughs> happy CRM. But I did a lot of looking, um, and we, we compared <laughs> Salesforce and Sugar and Zoho, and I just really loved Zoho, and it integrated with our... Um, we use HubSpot as well for some of our marketing, so we were able to integrate. Uh, what was the uh, other application used for customer support? User voice. User, User voice. Ticketing, yeah. That User. was what you were looking for, Tim. Was because even if you just talk yeah, about maybe accounting, so. uh -huh. not so much, um, you know, they're selling a software product. I'm selling a service, but it's the same ticket idea. Clients have questions. I, gotta, I have to follow up, so... Right. Um, my problem is I'm out, I'm running out of time. I want to I want to bring more clients into the value billing model, and so I'm rewriting all my contracts for 2014. And I want to be able to say, and my new model for 14 is. Yeah. Ta -da. Uh, Christmas holiday is very busy, huh? Yeah. Well, we have. <laughs> Everyone, I'm slammed. I mean, I, I'm yeah. I'm off this project. Yeah. The nice thing about it is when you do want to move your clients to um, using a T-Sheets application in your, in your package that you provide them, that's where our support takes care of all of the training. So you don't have to do that. You don't have to support your clients in that way. We don't expect you to te teach them how to use T-Sheets. That's our job. So it alleviates that from your plate. And how long does it take to become certified in T-Sheets? Well, I would just work with you on a custom demo and be able to answer questions. And really, you just sign up as a pro and you get your affiliate link right away. So Okay. And then we've got a whole resource page with anything that you would need as far as if you were wanting to talk to clients about T-Sheets and industry but specific. But does not integrate with QuickBooks Desktop yet. Is that true? Just QBO? No, we, we do integrate with QuickBooks Desktop. Yay. Do you have Yay. a direct connector? Maybe I forgot about that. Is it a Desktop direct and online, but we, we do not with Mac version. Now, Jesse, you know what feature I'm going to ask about to find out if you guys have created it yet, right? Uh-oh. His mm -hmm. favorite need. I, I, I want to be able to remotely zap my employees. Oh, that's right. <laughs> That's the Whippet application. Uh, so. I want to say it's up on the developer project board, so I'll give you a status update on that okay, offline. Yeah. Seth. Check with Sarah to find out which project management app you can put that task on, and then I want to know the percent complete on a week-to-week -week basis. 
You've yeah. been tased. That's what we'll call it. Yeah, the shock <laughs> collar is the feature. It'll be the it'll be the T taser instead yeah. of the T taser app. I can just see the reviews for that feature now. Yeah, that would yeah. be amazing. It'd be like, wake up! <laughs> I so, can see on the GPS map you're not moving. Move your butt. So Jesse, you're using Zo CRM. Do your yeah. people? Uh, do, well, first of all, do you use any of the other Zoho suite of, the, of apps like P Project or Bo Pulse or any of those others that we were I'm talking just, about? I am just getting started, and I had a fun conversation at the Sleater conference with the Zoho reps, and you know they had mentioned that they don't have a time tracking uh, <gasps> in their suite, and so it was like, oh, Perfect. that was yeah. kind of exciting. But um, we've I've been in conversations just to figure out what I want to tackle next. Zoho is a really broad. I mean, they have so many parts That's to right. their... They do have, just you play, they do have like, within Zoho there. Projects, there is a timekeeping app within that. So if I'm in mm -hmm. Zoho Projects working on a task I'm assigned, I can actually turn on a timer... Like a timer. ...and turn it off. And then they actually <laughs> have a built-in feature where I can use that information to build my client <laughs> for the time. And especially if I use Zoho Books, which we still haven't looked at, and Doug, I think we need to. Oh, that's a good idea. If well, I, I remember lot. correctly, Doug, didn't you I tell me Zoho Books has, like, improved a lot? Yeah, and and um, yeah, they they, you know, it's, it's this sleeper product sitting out there that none of us are really paying much attention to, but we need to, because uh. it's definitely one of the alternatives out there. What? what which one? Zoho That's Books, the, which is their their cloud accounting app. Yeah, it's accounting. Uh, with bank feeds and, it, and all of that. It of course integrates nicely with all their other chunks. That's the coolest thing about Zoho is they have so many of their own chunks that will work together very nicely. Oh, you're right. using you're using the right language, Seth. Chunks. I know. <laughs> I'm blowing chunks. <laughs> no, 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 not that way. <laughs> oh, that's what I did in college. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're done doing that for your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, does the user voice does that like have the capacity of a lot of people being involved for customer support that can look at it? It's yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's a really great product. Our team enjoys using it. And they're fun, too. Their whole company is fun. They have the same mindset of, you know, they just want to take care of their clients. So <laughs> we've enjoyed our collaboration with them. And has anyone used XCM? And I know this Doug's yeah, head's probably... Yeah, that was on my it. list. It's pretty Tim, that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no. I don't have a... Um, well, just if we have a source of you and Sarah, and Sarah you and I can follow up with her people with experience with it. Maybe we can just kind of really get the best of uh, practices from every single one of them and, you know, tap out to our resources and see who has the best experience so we can mm -hmm. add it to our collaboration. Mm -hmm. I think that would be great. You said tap out. Uh, I meant tase out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and by the way, before we f uh, wrap up for the day, joining us, I think, for the first time is Randy. Randy, you want to say hello? You might need to unmute yourself. Hi, I just uh, came on and uh, enjoying, if you can hear me, uh, yeah. uh, doing what, uh, what I'm hearing. In fact, I've had an interest for the last uh, while in something what, that I would call a uh, documented life uh, individual. Mm -hmm. Uh, for disabled people, so all of these points uh, uh, you're making are very interested. So uh, I, I, I want to hear more because I'm I'm thinking about how do I pull all these various things together into something. I've got a disabled brother, and I and I think there's a big market out there for people who uh, would want to like to keep an eye on people from, from distance, so to speak. Uh, so that's that's my my addition to the. To the conversation. As Great. far as um, when you're talking about remotely working, it'd be a, a good solution to for Not so much people to work remotely, or keeping. Uh, I would call it keeping an eye on uh, a, dis a disabled relative or oh, okay. uh, or or invalid relative, where mm -hmm. one could uh, use a combination of like hangouts for video calls, mm -hmm. uh, speech to text, uh, keep track of their uh, health uh, uh, commitments, uh, health appointments, and, and health status, things like that, all in a kind of personal database that uh, uh, other remote people, people who are not really right in the same city or in the same uh, area as the uh, disabled or invalid individuals. So I'm 
That's a fascinating. That's a fascinating topic. When you talk about um, uh, caretakers or relatives yeah. working with people who mm -hmm. aren't in the same house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I see it just in my own situation, and I see it. That it's, I think it'd be a, a growing market, and I. So I, for example, I've, I've started with Evernote and uh, uh, Skype and uh, speech to text like Dragon or, or other methods. Uh, but for example, my, my disabled brother is part of totally deaf, and so I use a lot of speech to text alternatives in, in uh, uh, Evernote and elsewhere to, uh, to talk to, you know, give questions to him so that he can answer and so forth. So there might be something out there that we can. Uh, Randy, your audio is chopping. Very interesting. Okay, okay. I understand. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm on my Android, so I may not be able to get all the points across. I'm trying to. No, now it's better. Now it's better. It's probably your audio. I think your bandwidth, bandwidth went away for a little bit, Randy. That's that all. Might be so. I'm on a, I'm a, I'm on a poor bandwidth uh, line, and uh, and so I, and I put my put the phone closer to the to the my mouse, so that should help. Hopefully. Yeah. I'm, I'm done. I, that's uh, so. I'm very interested in hearing about uh, some of the alternatives that you're seeing because uh, I don't see any one thing answering the things I need, but uh, but uh, some some kind of combination of uh, 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 several things, uh, several applications might might be working for, might be something that I could uh, uh, grab up my hands onto. Welcome. Thank you, Randy. Uh, yeah, please join us anytime. We'd love Great. to have you back every week. So uh, just quickly going back before we wrap up for the day. Um, so Jesse is posting in the chat. For those of us who are going to be in the live panel next week, uh, make sure you get your address to her. She's going to send you a T-Sheets T-shirt. And make sure she has your size. Okay. And everybody's going to wear their T-Sheets shirts for next week's hangout while we demonstrate T-Sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get Thank him to you, me. Thank you, This Try is your solution, Seth. To zapping your clients. Oh yeah? Will this they feel it? This is Big Bang Theory. This is the Whip app. Oh, that's hysterical. Ah, that's great. That's great. Hi, Kiki. I got one too. <laughs> I got it too. That's where I got mine, Joanne, from your post. Oh, you got it from my post. I love it. <laughs> that's hysterical. Wait, Sarah, you're not going to be with us next week? Oh, I'm no. sorry. No. But I'll be back. Okay. Well, I hope everything's okay. I want I want to give everybody a tip on the way out. I'm going to share my screen. I want you guys all to go do this. I wish I had a link for it though. <coughs> a book reference. Uh, I don't have a link for it. Um. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to share my screen real fast. Uh, where is that? It's Nerd's ebook on how to use Hangouts for business. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't say it's better. Than that. But That's where I can plug. So we're on a, we're on a trek. This book, uh, you guys see it? Okay, The Trusted Advisor. And it's by David Meister. M-A-I-S-T-E-R and Charles Green. Yeah. So you guys want to think about your uh, business and your role with your client. Mm -hmm. This book is the one that I'm currently like... Uh, Google ga Gaga about Google Gaga. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. There's already one Gaga. Yeah. Oh, did you see the t sheets? The the funny one about the trusted advisor. Oh, I have handed that to more people. Really? <laughs> what? It's funny. What did there's you do? a link for that yes. in the chat. Send I me the link. The chat. I know. Well, there's uh, this week's one was Matt. He was a really good sport and let us use his, um, his moniker. Head. Yes, so you, and that link is above. Gina posted that. Let me. I'll I'll try to find the trusted advisor page. It was pretty funny. It was fantastic. Oh, that was the infograph one. Yes. Doug, your name was there. Well, yeah, it was. Uh, it was the Wasass beginning of it, right? Because <laughs> Wasass. For what happens at Sleater shouldn't stay at Sleater because there were so many great takeaways. So yeah. our marketing team was just like, how do we keep this going? Yeah. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. I'm on there too. I'm sort of tucked in the bottom left corner. Okay. Yeah, you're down. Yep. Seth is there. Yeah. David Leary's there from Intuit. Michelle Long. 
But anyway, this is really cool. You guys must have worked forever on this. <laughs> we have a great team. They always surprise us. It's really mm -hmm. fun to. We have some really funny, like brainstorming meetings. Yeah. So. Oh, uh, I can't I find can it. I imagine this going up on. It has like made a, a huge impact on my life and my the way I'm going into 2014. Oh, good. It I really has the whole Sleater, you guys. It's just you awesome. Know, my whole my whole mindset is changing, and I'm going client by client, calling meetings, sitting down with them, talking to them. Like we've been doing business for 20 years. Let's you know. It's working. It's not working. Some I'm gonna, you know, leave. Um, yeah. You know, and and I just I'm I'm gonna get a life if it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, we'll see you guys all next. Well, it's next week that we're gonna do the. Uh, the yeah, we're gonna do t-shirts next week. Nice. And it, and by the way, today's Friday the thirteenth, so be careful. That's right. I have a 13-year-old today on oh, wow. the 13th. Okay, I just posted the link to the trusted advisor yeah. right there in the chat before we head out. Oh, yeah. Cool. Okay, Hi, try to send me sizes and mailing addresses today, and I'll get those in the mail to so make sure they get there by next Friday. Okay. See ya. Bye-bye. Right. Have a nice weekend. Good week, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.